as my viewers know, we like to joke around on this review show, but I like to take a serious moment. Every 2009, a ConstructCon is seen lesser by his peers and gets torn apart limb from limb just to get something out of it. It's a cruel world, but for $20, you can save a scrap metal from the shelf and maybe reassure its safety from being torn apart. Look at this. All he needs is hope, and you can give it to him. Do it, moron! When Revenge of the Fallen released its main line of figures, it was met with hesitation over only some Constructicons getting a proper toy, and the large Devastator comprised of vehicles without the robot modes. Granted, an argument could be made that he was his own entity, and the simplicity made it easy to work with, but people still wanted to see three mode Constructicons. About 10 years after the release, plans were announced to make up for that long lost hope in Studio Series, bringing more characters that will form the monster, starting with Scrap Metal, a character who got torn to parts to revive Megatron, their leader. Scrap Metal transforms into an excavator with a bucket-style arm. I bring this up because it's not accurate to what's seen in the film's alternate mode, which was a Volvo with a Muto-style jaw claw. Unless you count the random yellow bulldozer seen briefly in the film for no reason because consistency? It gets more confusing as I assume they chose this to represent the vehicle that would become Devastator's hand, and the shovels better depict the fingers. But even then, if you look back at the clip, you can spot the Volvo on the side, but also a front loader like Scrapper forming the hand. Someone tell me what's going on! I guess choices had to be made. I can't really call this inaccurate because, well, there is no accuracy to begin with, so this blend of an excavator with a bucket seems fitting for the figure, replacing what is essentially Bone Crusher's role. Even though he was seen in the film too! Trans theories help! I'm trying to give context, but he's having an identity crisis with Tonka vehicles, so can we just forget that and talk about the toy? Detail is pretty good if you can block out the nonsense on the front, but look at the treads with the gunmetal meat inside, and the arm itself with mechanics painted over in black. It really helps it stand out visually, but there are some flat surfaces that blend well. Windows are painted in a nice shiny blue, and I love the bars wrapping in the corners. Also, you see the panel in the back, I have a feeling that will come up again. I don't know why, just I have the feeling. Rolls pretty well for tiny wheels inside the treads, and the arm moves with multiple joints, extends pretty far with a bucket that can pick up everyone's stupid crap. It's simple when it comes down to it, but that's a good thing considering it's part of a combination, simple seems to secure its strength a little better, and personally he just reminds me of the old Tonka construction vehicles I messed with. It's fun to have a workable basic vehicle built for a job, interesting that this was the first offering to a combination, but for a start I think Think it works. Not to mention, it shows Hasbro's willing to release lesser known figures. Robot mode. might not be favorable to those who don't have an interest in the Bay Film style. Probably not the most wild, but you can waft in those tingly bass smells with the chicken legs, buggy head, and wonky torso. But guess what? That's interesting. I just love this goblin. He's not excessively weird for the movie format, but I can't get over the shovel hands and check out the inner torso detail. Also see the wavy panels and railings attached like backpack straps. I mean, he's clearly a movie former, but can I just like things for once? Is that hard? Face looks like some sort of swamp monster with Simpsons hair and tiny red eyes, but I dig it for trying something different. Screw the norm, you're beautiful, and the other guys are just jealous. Did someone say articulation? Ball jointed head, ball joint shoulders, hinge joint, ball joint elbows, shovel moves, shovel thumb moves, ball joint hips, rotation below, double knee, heels, and toes move. Posability is fine, and thanks to him not having actual hands, the gorilla arms doesn't really affect him poorly. Either way, I'm not gonna argue with clamp. You can even take the back, pull out the shovel, and have some dignity, why don't you? Does this count as an official upgrade kit for Megatron? Wait, two of them? Let's take a look at the accessories. This, uh, this is parts forming. Cog's whole gimmick is that he gets torn apart to make a bunch of weapons. Omega Supreme disconnects to form a bunch of things, that's the point. This, I 
feel cheated. It's supposed to be a shield, but what's the point? Were they so bored with the wonky legs, clamp hands, Lisa Simpson hair, fish face that they had to put a balcony on his arms? His shovels have thumbs, is that not enough? For Devastator, Scrap Metal becomes one of the hands. And for a toy, it's a massive one, almost the size of mine. Fingers are poseable, but with the middle finger being limited. Still good for a high five when needed. As the first step to the giant robot, I think it was smart to do Scrap Metal, showing how far they'll go to create it. Far enough to bring less known characters in studio series while giving hope for the Scrapper and even Hightower that would eventually become true. Besides that, he's an adorable little bugger for a freaky Constructicon. And no worries, that's a compliment. So if you dig the look, I think he's simple enough to warrant a purchase. There really isn't much I have an issue with. If you like it, I'd say you should try and get it. Just keep him safe and get a bit of super glue.